how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? You just got to your venue? Yeah, it's been a hectic day, but it's good. So, like, what is a typical, like, day in the life when touring then? Um, you usually wake up, uh, to, like, the brakes on the bus getting hit, maybe, like, your head slams against the wall. I'm not kidding. That's actually genuinely how I woke up this morning. Um, and then, um, all the boys slowly wake up, and then you get to the venue, and yeah, everyone's trying to find a shower. It's hectic. Mm-hmm. You got a few interviews yeah. the whole nine. So yeah. I guess we're just going to like jump right into it then. Um, I won't waste any of your time. Um, can you start by telling us the journey of like creating your debut album, Wild Child? I know that's coming out literally tomorrow. Yeah. So that's exciting. And uh, kind of what were some highlights and challenges you faced during the process? Um, yeah, I mean, the process of it, um, some of these songs are like two years old, so definitely a long process. Um, but I made some of the album in LA, some of it in Nashville. Um, yeah, worked with a lot of dope people while making it. Um, yeah, basically. I love that. And what like are some of your favorite songs from the album? Would you say like some of the essential Charlie songs that if yeah. you listen to you, you need to hear? Um, I really like this song, 81 Camino. It's the first song on the album. It's a very hype song, super fun to perform. Um, I like the song, I Don't Want to Go Downtown. Um, Ghost of Us, I'd say those are like my top three, but it switches though. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to like pick your favorite child too, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. So yeah. your music does span like a lot of different genres as well. You've covered like alternative, pop, country even. How do you decide to like yeah. blend those styles for the album and like what influences kind of shaped that for you? Yeah, Um. I think going in that, I mean, so like with the country side of things, I feel like I've always kind of had like a little bit of that in there I think after hours one of my first songs to um do well had like a little bit of country influence in there um but I'm a big fan of country music my mom only played country music in the house um and I think when I went to Nashville I started like playing around with that a lot more so yeah Nashville's great I mean I've been there a few times now and it's just so fun and the music aspect must be so inspiring too yeah, 100%. And you kind of like started making music in your basement, right? In Seattle? Yeah. So like, yeah. how did that approach kind of influence like how you were starting making music and like brought you to where you are now? Um, I think that, I don't know. I think that, like how did that like how did making music in the basement influence the music now kind of just like influence your career in general yeah um I don't know I was always just making like it was always just like we were doing it like for fun always mm -hmm. and I think that we make music that um we make like very like fun sounding music and like upbeat songs all the time and I think that I was just making music with my friends and we were just trying to do stuff like we weren't taking it like super serious at first and I think that you can like kind of feel that in like some of like the earlier songs like after hours like that song was just like four high school kids trying to make a song about house party and drinking and um I think you can still feel that in the music now like it's very like authentic to me mm -hmm. and my friends so um yeah definitely and I feel like especially when you start off with your friends, like it's so easy almost because like you're just, it's fun and you're just hanging out and doing like the music truly. So I feel like that's a good way to begin. Like for everybody is just having a group around you that you trust also. Yeah, hundred percent. And your homies will tell you if something's like not fire is fire. Like it's good to have that, uh, 
that honest that honesty around you have you like what has been a song or an experience with your friends where they've just been like I hate this have you had any yeah that's another thing too is like all my friends have different music tastes so like one of my friends might love it one might not like um that's just how it goes sometimes but yeah 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 well I guess that's like with everybody different tastes different vibes but you kind of mentioned that After Hours already and your other song Enough are certified platinum already so what do you think has been the key to like making your music and connecting that with your audience because you seem to do a great job um, of like keeping them engaged. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm big on like always teasing new stuff and like making sure that they always know that I'm working on new things and the fans always have, always have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. um, like there's a song on the album, the last song, it's called I Miss Seattle. Um, I teased that song like a year and a half ago. And I know that when I posted the track list yesterday, some people were like, oh my gosh, like is that this song from like then? So um, I think it's always just teasing new things will keep them engaged. You know that I'm always working on things. Yeah, hundred percent. And I feel like you're also just always super busy because like you open for artists like Tate McRae, Macklemore, like yeah, always experiences like and kind of how had did you learn anything while touring with them like about your music? Yeah, I mean I think that like touring with other artists the the best part of it is like getting to watch that person perform every night and like take things from them like Tay is a rock star like Macklemore in my opinion is one of the best performers ever to be honest with you like in my opinion um and I think just watching those people and like learning and taking things you know what I'm saying and um I think it overall just made me a better performer just having that opportunity and learning um from people that are so talented at performing so um yeah yeah I completely agree and I think Tate McRae she's killing it right now on tour it's awesome to yeah. watch so. No, it's super dope. somebody we can all learn from but yeah kind of back to your album um can you walk us through like your creative process behind um bottle go down or one of those songs because i feel like they're really fun tracks and kind of just talking through the inspiration of them would be awesome yeah yeah i'll go down was out I, I remember i was at audience in nashville and this dude at the bar was like, this bottle's going down like water. <laughs> and I thought that was interesting. And um, the next day in the studio, I remember we made like a super like breakup relationship B song. And I was like, yo, like, honestly, boys, I'm not really feeling this. Like, I just want to make a party song. Like, I just want to make something fun. Like, that's what I had been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember that. And yeah, we made bottle go down. I love it when it just like happens like that too. Like drawing inspiration yeah. from like the outside world, just from something like super simple. It's yeah, awesome. 100%. yeah. So, are there like any personal ex? Well, you've already kind of touched on it, but like any personal experiences or messages that you want to convey with this album? Like when you sat down with it, I know you said some of them are like years old, but what was kind of your approach to it? Um. I don't know. I think I just wanted to like tell like the stories of like what I've what my life has been like the last two years, to be honest. Um I think it's it's all in there, it's all covered, and I think there's a lot of really, really, really fun records. And I think that there's some like breakup records, and I think that there's some like I've healed from this records and like, yeah, it's like all in there. I mean, there's a lot of, I think like any like human being over like two years is going to go through highs and lows. And I think that um, it's important to cover all that in the mm -hmm. album. But um, I think the main focus of it is just a bunch of fun records and have fun. And I'm with my homies going all over the country doing shows and we're having fun and writing off those experiences. Um, yeah yeah no I agree completely and I feel like a lot of 
artists I talk to say similar things about their albums is that it's kind of just like how they're viewing life right now, like what they're going through. And like with that, it's a lot of fun yeah. love tracks and you can kind of get that vibe from Wild Child itself. 100%. Um, but how do you kind of balance like when you are bending so many genres with your songs and like putting that into an album, you still somehow make it like a cohesive body of work. So like, right. is that like intentional? Like, are you going, sitting down being like, this is, I want this to have like a bunch of different genres or is it, was it just kind of happening that way? I think for me, it's hard too. Cause like, I think that like I have different parts of my fan base almost where like someone who like, found me from a song like enough like maybe some of those people might not love like the super country leaning thing maybe they will but I feel like putting an album together I'm trying to like hit all those different pockets of the fan base at one time while still trying to make a cohesive body of work so um yeah I did my best to yeah. check all those boxes and um still make something that feels cohesive yeah, well, I think you did a great job. The album's amazing and you're on tour right now, which is super exciting. So what has been like the best part so far? And are there any specific songs that you wrote with touring in mind? A hundred percent. I think that like ever since I started doing shows, I started making music with the show in mind. I think it's like my favorite part of what I do. I think it's performing. Um, I think that this tour has been super eye-opening to like, when it's like all of our fans in a room, it's it's a really different vibe and it's really cool. Um, some things that have happened on tour. Um, my manager Drew caught something on fire on stage yesterday. Uh, um, how did that, that happen? was hectic. Um, we he plugged in an LED sign and it just caught on fire. I like I never even thought of that but like I'm now assuming that so many things like that happen on tour like just little oh that's not nice thing if a lot of people don't understand I feel like is so many things go wrong and yeah. I, I've seen that on every tour no matter like what level it's at and I feel like a big part of being an artist is just like learning how to like pivot and adjust to like little things like that like yo bro you're not gonna have the sign tonight like it caught on fire like yep so like how are we gonna work around that thing um yeah no tour is crazy but I I love it I love shit like that and do you get to like go out like and see like where you are a lot of the time during tour or are you kind of just touch and go yeah you see it for a little bit yeah. um depending on what's going on mm -hmm. like if you have to leave early or if you have to have like a day off um, we were in Tuscaloosa last night. That was my first time being in Bama. Um, that was dope. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. Um, and looking ahead, do you have like any future, not really bodies of work because you're touring and everything, but any like ideal collaborations you would have? Yeah, like dream collaboration. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Post Malone would be my dream collaboration for sure. Yeah. yeah. And especially with you two kind of leaning country, like in some senses, like perfect vibes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think his country album is fire. Yes. And I think that's all we have for you today. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing this.